AC charging, DC charging, fast, rapid. With the proliferation of EV charging options these days, it can be tricky to know just how fast are you charging. And depending on what car you have, it could take either days or minutes. Let's look at how fast your car charges and how to figure it out. Hi, my name is Martin Lee, and if you like this channel, please hit subscribe and the bell icon so you never miss a show. We're going to go through the different ways you can charge an EV and make sure that you are fully in the know. We'll start with domestic and AC chargers. Let's start with the slowest option, of course. We're talking about the beloved granny cable, as it's often called. This cable plugs into a typical domestic socket. It's pretty slow, but some people do all of their home charging from it. In the US, a standard domestic socket will charge at 120 volts. That's about 1.4 kilowatts. That's slow. That's really slow. To charge a long range Tesla Model S all the way from empty to full would take you three full days. Or to put it another way, you're giving your car about seven or eight kilometers of range per hour of driving. Here in the UK, a standard domestic socket delivers just over two kilowatts. So if you had a 30 kilowatt hour Nissan Leaf, for instance, you could go from empty to full in about half a day, about 13 hours. Absolutely fine. If you get home from work, say 6 or 7 p.m. in the evening, plug it in, it'll be fully charged the next morning for another 200 kilometers of range. That adds up to about 13 or 14 kilometers of range per hour of charging. Now that is slow, but it works for some people. It can be handy for visiting family and friends that don't have chargers. And as we always say on this channel, we don't recommend that plugging into a domestic socket is your permanent solution to charging at home for a variety of safety concerns. And you should look into that with a qualified professional. Now, for those who want a dedicated charger in your garage or driveway, you'll be getting a much faster charge. And it's what we recommend for charging at home if you do have at home charging. Typically, this kind of charger puts out around seven kilowatts, typically nearly three times more than a domestic socket here in the UK. So that's going to charge a, say, a 64 kilowatt hour Hyundai Kona from zero to 100% in about nine hours. And then you're good to go for 400 kilometers of driving. As we move away from home and start to look at public networks, the speed varies vastly. A popular type of charging you'll find in the likes of supermarket car parks is AC charging, the same as you have at your home electricity supply, AC power, and 22 kilowatt AC chargers, very popular in many parts of Europe as well. Here in the UK, that can charge your car 10 times faster than charging on a domestic socket. You could put 300 kilometers of range into a car that can take that speed, which is pretty much just the Renault Zoe, in just two hours. Just bear in mind, the Zoe is one of a rare bunch of cars that can take the full 22 kilowatts on AC chargers, even some very nicely appointed modern cars like the Hyundai Kona and Tesla Model 3 will only take half of that, 11 kilowatts at best. But that's still nearly 100 kilometers in the hour it takes you to do a weekly shop. Next, public network and DC chargers. Now is the fun part. The first generation of rapid chargers that have been around for years were mostly putting out around 45 to 50 kilowatts of power. That's a good match for the likes of a Nissan Leaf and the Renault Zoe, which would peak charge around that rate. So you could put 100 kilometers of range into your 2016 Nissan Leaf with its 30 kilowatt hour battery in about 20 minutes. That's not bad. Of course, Tesla's been plowing their own furrow for a long time now with their supercharging network. We're going to get to that in a minute. Stay tuned. The speed of development in EV charging has been astonishing over the last few years to a modern EV. 50 kilowatt charging now seems like turtle pace. Smaller hatchbacks like the Peugeot E208 can take 100 kilowatts. The new ID4 from VW will charge at a peak rate of 125, and the highly anticipated Hyundai Ioniq 5 will take in the region of 200, a peak of maybe 230 kilowatts. We'll find out when those cars are out at the end of the year. That's incredible speed. When you keep in mind that the rollout of DC rapid chargers continues and the amount of chargers capable of delivering all of that power that something like a Porsche Taycan or the Ioniq 5 can take, 
well, they're still quite rare. So how do you know how fast your car is charging? Well, unfortunately, it's not as simple as just plugging into a 150 kilowatt charger and presuming that's exactly what you're getting. You see, some cars are limited in their speed. So it doesn't matter how fast the charger is, you're only gonna charge at, say, 50 kilowatts. Even a car like a Tesla Model 3 may not take all of that power if the battery is too hot or too cold or too full. So it depends on the car that you have and the charger you're plugged into. Let's take a car like the Kia e-Nero. Has a display that tells you what level of kilowatts you're getting. A Tesla Model 3 will tell you what kilowatts the car is taking, but also how many miles or kilometers of range that you are adding per hour. And that can be pretty cool to see if your Tesla is at a V3 supercharging station taking well over 200 kilowatts per hour, that's a rate potentially of 1,500 kilometers every hour. You can calculate how fast your car has charged by looking at the battery percentage and making a rough calculation. Check how much battery percentage was added during the charge. Okay, let's do some sums here. If you added 50% of a 50 kilowatt hour battery in a quarter of an hour, then you've added 25 kilowatt hours. In that case, you know you charged at an average of 100 kilowatts per hour. So how do you know how much all of that costs? Well, it's an electric car, so it's gonna be way cheaper than driving combustion, no matter what. Of course, the cheapest way is to use a free public charger or even top up using solar panels mounted on the top of your house. But that's not possible for many people a lot of the time. If you're charging at home, you need to figure out what rate you pay for your electricity. All right, let's do another example. Let's say you are paying 15 cents a unit or 15 cents per kilowatt hour. Now, let's say that your EV has a 64 kilowatt hour battery. You can just multiply 15 cents by 64 kilowatt hours. If your battery went from zero to 100%, you'd spend $9.60. You can then take that a step further and divide $9.60 by what you get out of a full charge in terms of distance to give you your cent per mile rate. You should try it and you'll get a really pleasant surprise of how cheap it is to drive an EV. Now, fast charging is all well and good, but you might say, I've heard that's bad for my battery. Is it worth thinking about how you charge your battery and the effect that it has over time? Now, the technology has moved on a great deal since the original Tesla Roadster and Nissan Leafs. Those early cars could suffer after a few years if you were constantly rapid charging them all the time. These days, much better battery management systems. You'll hear it called the BMS. And the batteries themselves have improved vastly. It's worth trying to avoid charging the car to 100% and letting it sit there, plugged in. Likewise, running it to 1% and leaving it at an empty charge can also be very bad. Having said that, there's little to worry about unless you're really abusing the car and the battery. Indeed, if you read the owner's manuals of some cars, they will say, charge it to 100%. Others will say charge it to 80. It's not one size fits all, and you need to follow the specific advice you'll be given for your car. Hopefully you've got some good tips today on how to figure out how fast your car could be charging. It might be a bit tricky to get your head around at the start, but once you get used to your EV, you'll barely have to think about it again. Hey, thanks for watching this week. We'd love to know what you think of today's show in the comments section below. Let us know what car you drive or maybe what you would like to drive in the future and what type of charger you'll be using or what you use every day. Are you, like us, obsessed with charge speeds? And what about how much you pay for charging? Do you get free driving from rooftop solar or a nearby free charger? Let us know in the comments below. Give us a thumbs up if you like this video so we know to make more like it. And we'll see you on the next one.